My guest today is Caroline Campbell, and we have had this fantastic conversation about sponsorship. Caroline, how can people find you? Robin, they can find me either online at eventsponsors.com.au, uh, find me on Facebook or on LinkedIn, and uh, or most definitely send me an email, info at eventsponsors.com.au. Fabulous. It's been such an illuminating conversation. I know you're going to love it. I'm Robin Cook, and this is Stories from the Red Couch. So, Carolyn, it's challenging everywhere in business, like right across every industry, it's incredibly challenging. What sort of things do you think wake up business owners in the middle of the night? Oh, look, honestly, Robin, the the, uh, the list is long these days, obviously, with, you know, so much disruption taking place across industries. Every business is having to, to reassess how they do business. And of course, coupled with that, the costs of doing business are going up and the returns are being diminished because of the level playing field that really exists now. So businesses are going to have to get a lot smarter into the future and certainly many, many industries are facing that as we speak right now. So it's a challenging time. And uh, I guess that they really need to be able to differentiate themselves from their competitors, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And Look, it's work out what, what's unique about them. Yeah, it's it's very much a, a, a marketing challenge yes. for many of these companies. And it's about finding out what they can do to stand out from the crowd. Um, because there is so much clutter yeah. and clutter not only obviously uh, in terms of bricks and mortar for many businesses uh, but certainly online uh, is is a very convoluted space at the moment but it's where everyone is yeah. and and businesses have to go there because that's where their target market is that's right yeah. I find that um, lots of businesses talk about stories now and and they have a story to tell or they they come in and allow Align themselves with various elements in the community and and help to share a story through that how important is it for a business to work out what their story is oh Robin it's extremely important and I suppose that is the space that I play in is our community sponsorship and uh, certainly over my 25 year career in in television and in recent years also in the uh, finance industry uh, these companies that I work for certainly realize the value of sponsorship and what that can do for them. So I suppose it comes down to understanding branding and the brand proposition uh, and having a strategy around what you're going to do for your brand in the long term. And branding is a long term exercise. It, you know, it's those um, short-term campaigns that you see online through digital and social that's less about branding that's mm -hmm. more about moving products and services but for brand exercise you know nothing beats sponsorship and uh, unfortunately the challenge though is that um, there are just so many uh, organizations that engage in sponsorship but don't actually understand how to do it. I don't think, well, I mean, I don't think any of us really understand it because I know that uh, when I was a kid, you might go to the footy and it, and it happens now still. Yeah. And along the edge, there'll be, you know, so-and-so architects or solicitors or whatever. Yeah. Everyone wants sponsors, don't they? Oh, look, absolutely. And, you know, being a parent and having kids who are involved in a number of uh, different sporting um, clubs and organisations, um, not to mention the arts and... Well, that's um, right, because it's not only sport, is it? Oh, that, it's that's not. It's for not. It's, it's non-for-profits. I mean, the charity section is yeah. huge. Um, but, you know, there's a plethora of organisations most worthy of receiving receiving sponsorship support but I think where the disconnect is is in terms of what 
uh, sponsorship seekers are offering up to sponsors and what sponsors want in return. Yes. And it's having that understanding of what they can both bring to each other, but bring in a smart way. So you'd mentioned earlier about having um, signage on perimeter fencing. That's all very well, but it's not necessarily engaging with the target no, market. No, And that's the cornerstone of best practice sponsorship is creating a win not only for the sponsorship seeker mm. and for the sponsor obviously who has their business objectives behind it but also making sure it's a win for the uh, for the event attendee or for the um, family or the member of that sporting club or, or sure, community because group. you don't really want the sponsor element to overshadow no, everything no, else do no. you? It's, sub it's really subliminal messaging yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. that's the key. I mean sponsorship is easily one of the most powerful marketing platforms okay. available. You know, it, it engages uh, on a level that's far greater than what you can actually achieve through social mm. even, but it's got to be done well. And I suppose for me, with where I'm at with my research, um, what I've come to understand is it's very much about understanding what makes people tick and for brands to be able to tap into that. What are the fundamental human sure. needs that we're all trying to have fulfilled when we participate in endurance events or, or other, um, you know, community events or sponsorship mm. or, you know, when we're part of a club, what is it that makes us want to be part of that club? What are the values of that club but then from a brand's point of view they need to also have a very firm understanding of what their value set is mm. and then ensure that it's a brand fit make sure that there's an alignment between right. what the sponsor um, the sponsor seeker is looking for and what you are looking for yeah. so as an example if you're let's just say that you're a you know a new startup organization a strategy might be to actually look for a sponsorship of an organisation that's been well established. So it's got that credibility already in the marketplace, which bodes well for you being new to market. So there has to be a very clear strategy. The strategy needs to be linked to the business goals, mm. uh, but then it's about leveraging. Yeah, so that's... Uh, well, and I was, I was just thinking that um, from the businesses or the, the sponsors' perspective, it's not about getting money in the bank straight away, isn't it? It's not like no, selling no. a product and you're walking through the door and, oh, and it's, so it's an exchange of money. So how does that work? I mean, that's a real mindset in itself, isn't it? Is, it is, Robin. Yeah. And not only that, it's a, there's a misconception with sponsorship that sponsorship is all about driving a return on investment and I beg to differ. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, sponsorship is about creating brand awareness and about changing perceptions and behaviour. So you want to get return on investment, you, you want to drive sales and generate leads, that kind of stuff. Leave that stuff to your social and your digital mm. but let sponsorship speak volumes in the hearts and the minds of the people that you're trying to reach. Mm. So I think sponsorship needs to be a hell of a lot more authentic than what it is yeah. and a lot more genuine such that you are actually making a meaningful contribution to that organisation. So it's and, and I think people are very savvy these days too. They know when a sponsor's really just coming in there to try and sell. Yeah, and well it, I'd it, agree it, with you. And and you want to be in that moment. So if you're you're in the, the sporting arena or uh, yeah. seeing a performance or whatever, it really does bring that emotion out in yeah. the participants, yeah. doesn't it? And yeah. so if they're seeing that um, these businesses and organisations are supporting you to enjoy that and supporting the players or the performers to present that, that's really sharing the love. 100%. Yeah. So what it's about doing is amplifying the good things about that sure. event experience, but but amending or fixing or eradicating those things which are less enjoyable so whether it be the 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 um, queue for the portaloos yes. or you know the you know the the heat or whatever it else might be mm. that's a sponsor's opportunity to make a difference in very subtle but meaningful ways that great. greatly improves I the love event. that practicality yeah, yeah. It, exactly it's, Robin. it's a reality isn't it it is 
it's, and it's the thing that you complain about if you have to stand for a half an hour in a queue. It is. You're going to whinge about that. Those are the things that make a difference yeah. in the hearts and minds of consumers. But as well as that, what sponsors need to also be doing is they need to be leveraging their sponsorship 365 days of the year. So not just on okay. the day of the event. There is an opportunity for them to be leveraging it with branded content, both in the lead up to the event, during the event and post the event. So how do they get that content? I mean, content, we hear that all the time. Yeah, Every business yeah. um, conference that you go to yeah. or class or masterclass or whatever, yeah. content, 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 content. Content, absolutely. How do you get that? Yeah, and look, Robin, um, I, am, I am in development on uh, a new product line actually through our event sponsors website that it creates an opportunity for uh, sponsorship seekers and sponsors to connect in that branded content yes. space. However, for the moment, what I would say is it really takes setting aside dedicated resources yes. on the sponsors part to be able to ensure that they have uh, They've leveraged the sponsorship in that negotiation process so that they are able to set aside those resources to create that content. So what they actually should be negotiating for is access to exclusive content that they can own themselves. Okay, yeah. It can be anything. It can be anything from, you know, access to one of the key players, uh, to a behind the scenes area, uh, to a performance that no one else gets access to. There are so many different things. Mm that a sponsor can do and it's really not that hard because we've all got smartphones yeah that's so right. it's very very easy to create content to brand it and then to share it with the community mm. that that you are part of what what's the best way for a community group or an arts group or whoever mm. to make contact with sponsors because uh, I've been in groups like that and you think, oh, should I ring them? Should I yeah. go and see them? Yeah. What language do I use? Very true. How do, yes. I, how do you do that? Yes. Because you don't want to burn your bridges. You don't no. want to seem... No, Robin. Aggressive. And, that's right. And you really do have one take yes. at it. You've, you've got one chance to get it right. Yeah. So I think first and foremostly what I would be suggesting is that uh, you do your research. So you actually do your research on who might be a potential brand fit for your event or for your organisation. And then you put together a sponsorship proposal. Um, if you actually go to our website, eventsponsors.com.au, we've got sponsorship proposal templates. Uh, we've got um, best practice in terms of how you can be approaching a uh, uh, potential sponsor. But it really is about understanding the needs of the sponsor first. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do receive a number of sponsorship proposals on behalf of the clients that I, I look after. And I'm so interested to see how many of them are all about promoting who they are and what they do, but not for a minute actually stopping to think, well, let me share what I know about your organisation and upsell how this could work for mm. you. And I think it's about joining those dots that makes a very, very big difference. Would it be that uh, you'd be reading the prospectus of the, the company or you'd go yep. to their website yep. and you'd look at their about yep. page and their mission oh. statement and all of those sorts of things so that you can use that same language? Oh, look, for sure. Uh, you'd be forgiven if you didn't. Yeah. but. Um, look, every company these days understands the, the necessity of having multiple communication channels. Mm. So, you know, you've got web and you've got um, digital and social both there. You've got their Facebook mm. pages, Instagram, whatever it might be. So, yeah, you've got to do your homework um, firstly. But you've also got to be able to be persistent as well and, and be creative mm. in terms of what you're seeking because the difficult thing these days as as we mentioned earlier businesses are doing it tough mm. so cash while cash is king for sponsorship seekers it's not very easy to come by yes. so more and more these days you actually see in-kind or contra agreements sure. being that, struck that might be um, sharing an event on their social media if a business has got a large social media following and and you're trying to sell tickets to something it 
might be as simple as just oh, look, abs sharing it. Absolutely. It, it really is, I suppose, um, uh, sharing like for like value yeah. and, and finding those opportunities. So I think certainly um, the critical point is, is it's not one size fits all. Sure. So any sponsorship proposal uh, that goes to a potential sponsor really needs to be a bespoke opportunity yeah. and a bespoke agreement because there is nothing worse than being a sponsor and seeing your logo perhaps, you know, on the end of a TVC or in a press ad or on, mm. on a website or on um, e-marketing and all of a sudden you look at the, the bottom of it and, you know, there's 16 sponsor logos. Yeah. It's of very little value. Obviously, the more more logos there are, the greater the diminished, sure. you know, the diminished returns there are. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's very much about understanding the needs and wants of the sponsor and thinking outside of the box in terms of how you can deliver. Yeah. So what is it about sponsorship that gets you so excited? I mean, oh, I know, clearly, Robin, I you've know. You've been doing it for such a long time. I know, but yeah. It seems like such an odd thing to be working I know, in. I, I love know. it. Well, I do too. Yeah, so I what is it? it? You know, it's, uh, it's something I've always done. So, uh, so I started in television in this capacity, uh, fresh out of university with a journalism degree, and uh, I was trying to get a foot in the door in the newsroom, but ended up in marketing and sponsorship instead, and that's where I stayed um, back as a 21-year-old. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, now is is my 25th year working working in that space, and I suppose what drives me is because I see so much funding that goes towards sponsorship and yet it's just not well done yes. and so many people don't understand how to do sponsorship well and I, I well understand all of the limitations that are there mm. you know especially from a, a resources point of view but also from a capabilities point of view and I think any business these days really does need to invest in their capabilities and and you know that can be as simple as just our own self-education to get better at it so I really do I absorb myself in it because yes. it, it is my day job but I just love it immensely and I can see the potential of it and I just feel right now it's a little bit mistreated yeah. a little bit misunderstood yeah. well and disrupted like any other industry and it's time for oh, time to be disrupted 100 percent. Mm. so you know when it comes to sponsors what you were previously offering as value yeah. to a potential sponsorship speaker, seeker may not be that appreciated these days because all of a sudden they've got their own capabilities yeah. so you've got to keep reinventing and rethinking what you can offer up mm. that is going to deliver them real value yeah. so, so what would be best practice in the sponsorship world now yeah for sure so i look if i was to sort of i suppose give five key points around that the first one is to leverage before you negotiate mm -hmm. because once the agreement's done it's kind of done yeah. so i think you know with as if we were to talk about this from the point of view of a sponsor um understand what the opportunity is and leverage that before you agree to it really you know you don't have to spend a lot of money on sponsorship if you're clever mm. and if you're creative in fact very often time you don't even have to sponsor an event to to capitalize on it so and that's what i suppose what you call ambush yeah. um, ambush marketing <laughs> but but most definitely understand what it is that you want to get out of it and knowing that our target market predominantly across every industry exists online you really do need to look at it now beyond the logos and the signage that mm. you can get on site because it's only going to deliver so so many returns so really maximum value low cost um, make sure that your sponsorship strategy uh, is aligned with the business strategy uh, because you can't have mm. um, two different parts of the organization going two different ways certainly uh, engage with your colleagues and with anyone else that may be potentially involved in the sponsorship mm. to get them on board mm. also at that negotiation stage because of course there's nothing more difficult than agreeing to a sponsorship and then having no one that's willing to attend the event that you've, <laughs> that you've paid. That's embarrassing. 
embarrassing. <laughs> paid all of this money for a while. I've had that happen more than once. So, um, so yeah, there, there are a few of the, the critical things, but, it, you know, most certainly I think it's very much about understanding that sponsorship can be 365 days of the year. Yes. And critically, you do need to engage with your target market. You've got to reach their hearts and minds mm. and you've got to think of ways to do that. And it doesn't have to be difficult. You just need to be creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of opportunity. Yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks for oh, joining me. Thank you, Robin. And I so appreciate your time. I think I've got a much better understanding about sponsorship. And in the, the various community groups that I work with, that's going to give me some good ideas. Magnificent. <laughs> well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much so for the opportunity. So, where can people find you? Uh, yes, uh, simply go to eventsponsors.com.au. It's a sponsorship marketplace that connects sponsorship seekers with sponsors. Uh, there's various tiered levels that you can come in uh, on that. And, of course, um, through caroline at eventsponsors.com.au, that's direct contact to me um, from a sponsorship management point of view. Fantastic. My guest today was Carolyn Campbell. I'll be back next week. We'll see you then. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, there, there are a few of the, the critical things, but, it, you know, most certainly I think it's very much about understanding that sponsorship can be 365 days of the year. And critically, you do need to engage with your target market. You've got to reach their hearts and minds. And you've got to start